on our slides. Okay, so let's get started. First of all, hello everyone. I'm very happy to have you all here. For those who don't know me, my, my, name, my name is Richard, uh, as known as Rich, and I'm going to be your host today. I apologize in advance as my English is not perfect. However, I try my best to keep it as simple and as slow as possible. Okay, so let's get started. Here's our table of contents. First of all, we'll go over and check uh, uh, what candlesticks really are and how to, how to read a, a candlestick uh, pattern like a pro without memorizing its names. Then we'll go over support and resistance and how to treat uh, them the correct way. Then we'll uh, state the difference between support and resistance and supply and demand then trend lines characteristics and customized tips and tricks. Uh, then we'll go over and, uh, uh, and check uh, some, some advanced uh, stuff like the truths about trading and how to have an edge over the market in, in a technical way and through risk and money management. Last but not least, we'll go over the importance of a trading plan and how, how to create one, what's a trading plan, what's its importance, and how to trade uh, in an objective manner. Okay, so as mentioned, let's start with the candlestick uh, cheat sheet. First of all, we all know that uh, the candlesticks are, are the what, the price action, which is really more important than the why. So uh, uh, price action traders focus on the chart by itself on price by itself and don't really care why the price is going up or down what we really uh, uh, care about is what we are seeing what patterns we, we can identify and then what we can understand from this movement and what we can uh, uh, and how we can behave in, in a certain way after a certain market condition so all known information is reflected in the price itself. So uh, if if a country is is make uh, is doing good, then it's uh, it's currently is expected to move move upward. And if if a country is making is not uh, making really doing really good, then its uh, um, its value its currency is expected to go down. Every candle is a battle between uh, uh, the buyers and the sellers. Uh, on every candle, we can ask uh, ourselves who is in control now. Then, uh, as you all know, here's the, the bullish and, and the bearish pattern. It's a very, uh, very basic stuff. The one in green is a bullish one. So the buyers, this one opened around here and went went upward. Here's its high. That's why we can see a, a wick and it's not filled around here. So here's our open, price went up. Here's the lowest point that price made it in this particular candle, whether it's an H1 daily or even M30, M1, anyway. So it opened here and closed around here. So uh, in this particular frame, price went up. Okay, and in this particular, uh, particular uh, uh, candle, price went from here to here. Let's move forward as these are basic stuff. Anyway, uh, many people always ask me, there are so many candlestick patterns. How do I remember uh, its name? You don't, don't have to remember uh, the candlestick's name if you really understand what, what it means. So what we really want to know is these three things the color of the body tells me who is in control so this one is in green so the buyers uh, are in control in this case and the sellers are in control obviously 
in uh, this uh, this candlestick. Uh, that's one. Two, the length of the wick represents price rejection. So if you have a big wick, a big wick from, from the upper side means that we have a selling pressure that price tried to go up, but, but couldn't trade higher because the sellers uh, didn't let price move this uh, further. And most importantly, the ratio of the body to the work tells the whole story. Let's take some examples. So in the first row, uh, in the first row, the buyers are in control. This one is the most bullish. This one is the second. Uh, most bullish and this one is a regular bullish candlestick pattern so uh, for this okay <laughs> so it seems someone is having a party okay so for for this uh, for this candle price uh, opened around here and closed here there was no uh, uh, interaction from the sellers. The buyers in this particular candle were in full control the entire uh, time. For, for this candle, the second bullish candle, price, price opened around here and the sellers tried to push it downward, but the buyers kick in the last couple of minutes and pushed price again higher and even higher than the close itself. So that's why this one is considered a bullish, uh, a strong bullish uh, rejection candle. This one, we all know that it's obviously bullish. This one is the market is, is stuck in a range. Usually, uh, let's say on your USD, your midnight, you can see that because the Euro market is closed the london market is closed and the new york usd market is also closed that's why uh, during midnight we can see many candles because we don't have volatility and it's stuck in a range so the these two candles uh, in the middle are uh, are undecided candles then uh, uh, here we have the bearish candles. The sellers are in control, just exactly the opposite from this one. We're not going to repeat it to gain more time. Let's move forward. As mentioned before, the lens of the wick represents price rejection. So uh, even though this candle is in gre uh, green, it doesn't mean that it is bullish. Okay, so if we have a, a long, a big uh, wick uh, from the upper side means that we have rejection, means that the sellers were in control in this particular, in, in this particular uh, um, uh, time period of time. Okay, so I, I don't have to, to, I don't have to memorize what is an engulfing pattern or shooting star or, or whatever. All I need to know that I have to know the relation between the body and the wick. If we have a big body with no wicks, means let's say it's, it's green, it's bullish, means that the buyers are in control. If we have a candle with a big wick from, from on the upper side, means that the sellers are, are, are in control. And if we have an equal uh, body and an equal uh, wick, means that uh, uh, the, the, uh, the the this this currency pair is stuck in a range and it's still undecided, like like the patterns like dodgy and and very small candles. Okay, we are done with the basics. I assume that you all know uh, the stuff, but I, I, I obviously I have to, I had to start with the basics first. Second, we cover support and resistance. Uh, maybe support and resistance are the most known uh, tools uh, in order to analyze a chart as they look uh, really easy and they are fairly easy to spot on your chart. So uh, uh, it, obviously it's uh, if price was going up and, and hits uh, a, a resistance and was going up, let me check, here we go. If it was going up and from this area here, uh, the sellers didn't let price 
to break higher than uh, and made, made a rejection to the downside means we've got a resistance around here. It's like a floor uh, and a ceiling. If you if you are sitting in the second floor, the, the upper uh, the upper wall is your ceiling. You can't break above it, and the lower floor that you are standing on is your support. You can't break below it. And if if you manage to break below your, your support below your floor, then then you will uh, you will end up in, in your neighbor's floor and you, your floor uh, obviously is you, your neighbor's ceiling okay let's move forward from here uh, the truths or tips and facts about support and resistance um, as you all know support and resistance are zones on your charts and not lines many uh, traders uh, this that's a mistake traders uh, usually make they consider the support and resistance as uh, lines and not and not zones okay that's one we'll take we'll take many examples about uh, this one two support and resistance can be dynamic like like a moving average or, or like trend lines we'll cover this one as well number three the more times support uh, or resistance is tested the weaker it becomes okay let's uh, open our uh, our whiteboard and give you examples about the first three facts give me a moment here we go i assume that you, you can now see a whiteboard so first of all we mentioned that support and resistance are not lines on our chart they are zones Okay, so we treat our support and resistance as zones. Why? Because, let me give you this example. So many trade price was go going upward, made the first rejection, and then went upward again, made the second rejection. We can consider that now we have a, a resistance area, right? So we, we treat our support and resistance as zones and not lines because many traders just enter buy after the resistance is broken assuming that it's uh, it's now turning into support we don't enter buy on uh, on resistance and we don't enter sell on support i, I believe many of you have heard of this quote but let that me let me clarify it for example for example, trader A, let me check how to draw letters. Here we go. Let's say trader A put his resistance around here and trader B puts it around here and trader C puts his resistance around here. And as mentioned before, the uh, the market is a, a continuous battle between the buyers and the sellers. So trader A, here's uh, uh, his resistance, and B, here we go, and C. So if price went upward for trader A, this resistance is broken, but for trader B and C, uh, the resistance is not broken yet, and they are still looking for sell opportunities around here. That's why many times you see price goes up, breaking only this line and then to find the ejection around here and shoot downward aggressively and many of you started start to uh, say that it's uh, it's uh, it's stop loss hunting or market manipulation uh, uh, it's right that sometimes this happens but so sometimes it's the traders mistake treating support and resistance as the laser lines okay so first of all for us to consider that the resistance is broken we need an aggressive movement upward breaking all the resistance for all types of traders okay so if price went like this we are still looking for sell opportunities unless price breaks it upward and 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 you have to keep in mind the word aggressively like this a momentum break like many big candles trading up upward then and only then we consider that our resistance is broken and as mentioned before we will not sell on resistance we will not buy on resistance 
We will not buy around here, we will not buy around here. We will just wait for price to retest our previous resistance as we now expect that it would be turned into support. And uh, uh, in the next slide, we'll check why a resistance will, uh, uh, will turn into, into support. So we will not buy after a break above the resistance. We will wait for an aggressive movement upward, and then we'll be looking for objective for potential buy setups as price retests uh, our previous resistance. Okay, so that's for our number one. For number two, give me a moment again. That's for number one. N number two, how to treat support uh, uh, and resistance the, the, the correct way. As mentioned before, we treat our support and resistance as zones and not laser lines. Give me a moment again. Okay. So uh, as for our trading style, uh, me and my students, we always uh, draw our support and resistance from from daily and weekly time frame, as we call them key rejection levels. So here's our resistance, and the lower one is our support. And if price is trading around here, we are not looking for sell or buy opportunities. We always wait, we zoom into H1 and H4, and we always wait for price to approach uh, our resistance, identify identified from daily and weekly time frame and here we will be looking for objective uh, or 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 sell op opportunities and as price approaches our lower support we'll be looking for buy uh, buy opportunities and if price breaks below below our support then uh, our support will become resistance obviously and here we go and if price breaks below our support, then our support will become resistance and the lower support will become our next support. So we'll not look for opportunities as price, as we call it, uh, it is in a uh, no man's land. So here, we are not interested in buying or selling. We always wait for price to be overextended and to reach uh, our resistance to look for sell opportunities unless price breaks upward and it will become the support and we'll be looking for objective buy opportunities. Okay, that's the correct way to, to treat. Uh, Rich, I have a question. Yes. How many times uh, should the support or resistance uh, be tested in order to be, to great, be considered great. weak? Great, great, Joseph. That's a very good question. I, I will answer it uh, in, in the next section, okay? Deal. Okay, perfect. Uh, Rich, one thing, please, before yes. to, to, to go in ahead. Yes. Uh, you were saying that we will be waiting for, for a chance for the opportunity to sell. The last thing that you mentioned, you were drawing uh, on the here. middle of the screen. Right here. Yes, correct. Okay. What you we are waiting for the opportunity to sell. You said we will be waiting till uh, till the trend will be up and, uh, and right, we'll right, 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 right. We'll cover this. Uh, we'll cover this one and the next section. Okay. Uh, but first of all, now we are we are building building our strategy uh, bit by bit, brick by brick, mm -hmm. and and now first of all we draw our support and resistance the ones you see in red purple and green we draw it from weekly and daily time frame and then we zoom in and we will cover what we'll be looking for around these areas okay okay thanks you are more than welcome willie okay so now let's move forward uh third we were uh let's check the powerpoint again Third, uh, the difference, give me a moment, here we go. Uh, the more times support and resistance uh, is tested, the weaker it becomes. That's what Joseph just asked. Let's open our whiteboard again. Okay, so here we are going to explain um, how the market works. 
Okay, so let's say you have you have a, a building. We have floor, ceiling, floor two, and floor three, floor four. Give me a moment. Okay, here we go. So, so let's say we have a building, let's make it like this. Great. So, so as mentioned before, if price is sitting around here, then here's, uh, here's our first ceiling, and what I expect that price will go down. Unless price breaks it upward, then would be uh, would be in our neighbor's house, and here's here would be our new floor and our new ceiling. So if 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 someone managed to get around here, then this ceiling will act as resistance and uh, to push whoever comes around here downward. Unless we've managed to cross to cross to break uh, the ceiling, then uh, then here's again we have another neighbor sitting around here this one would be our floor and ceiling and so on so here resistance support unless breaks down then here would be our new resistance and our new support so now to, to answer Joseph's question when do we know that uh, uh, this ceiling uh, will not hold anymore Let's delete those drawings. Okay, so uh, um, now we've we've uh, we, we try to understand support and resistance in a simplified way. Now uh, let's make a projection, uh, 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 a projection for the forex world. Let's say, why does price when when price reaches our resistance? Why does uh, uh, price goes down. What? Because when price goes up, okay. Because when price goes up, many traders are looking for sell opportunities, and many traders have put their sell limit orders around here. Whether they are retail traders like you and me, or or bank institutions, fund man ma management, hedge funds, so they put their sell limits around here and many traders tried uh, entered sell okay so here when price reaches this area the sellers would be more than the buyers and here we go again so uh, let's say joseph uh, saw this first move and entered sell then we've got willie willie uh, opened his his mt4 like two days after and so that there were a rejection two times, the first time here and the second time around here, then he noticed that we have a resistance. So now he's looking for sell opportunities as this one is still a fresh resistance. Here we go, we will cover how will, will, he, will he be looking for sell opportunities. Anyway, so here we go one more time. One more time, let's say, uh, let's say Eli or Jad. Uh, so this resistance one more time and entered sell. So the expected, the expected times uh, um, uh, for, for almost all traders to see the support and resistance are five times. So, so after five touches, okay? So after five touches, the ceiling uh, is more likely to be broken upward than to be uh, than to have a rejection from it why because here willie saw it jad saw it by 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 willie and jad i mean the type of traders like willie and like jad so here we hear like one million traders uh, saw this this move then here two millions then here again again and again uh, after the fourth or first uh, touch uh, almost all traders all sellers so uh, this ceiling, so they are not uh, interested in selling around it anymore as they already uh, made profit from it. And most importantly, not just retail traders like us, 
most importantly, the banks are no longer interested and uh, in, in, in putting orders around this one. As, uh, and that's what many people call uh, market manipulation, as we've got a resistance here, price goes up and then goes up a little, but an overextended move to kick everyone out. That's what, what retail traders who've entered sell here, call it a market manipulation as price went up to kick us out and, and then uh, went uh, down uh, again. That's not called market manipulation. That's, that's because these traders uh, treated uh, the resistance as laser lines and not zones. And the reason why resistance are zones is because uh, 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 usually the banks don't just enter all their trades uh, um, uh, in one single trade. Let's say they want to enter 5 billion, okay, on, on sell on EURUSD. They don't, don't just enter like, like I don't know, uh, 1,000 lots uh, uh, on, in one trade only. They, they divide their orders on many levels. They put many sell limits here and here and here and here to, to divide their orders like 100, 100, 100, 100. That's why price will go up to get more liquidity, to get more sellers to be able to push price lower. Okay, so now we've covered support, support and resistance and when we can expect that they will be broken. And, and one more thing before we jump uh, into our next, uh, next uh, section. Uh, to, to answer the last question uh, in a detailed manner, when price uh, approach uh, a resistance, we can expect that the sellers will kick in and, and push price lower, right? So we can expect the price will go up and then reject it down, go up, reject it down. If price up approaches our resistance and gets stuck around, around it, that's what we call build up. Okay, that's what we, we call build up. If price approaches our resistance and make a build up, like it gets stuck in a range, means that the sellers were not very strong enough to push price lower. In this case, it's more likely that that price will break the ceiling, the resistance upwards okay so th these are our two clues the first one is after five touches the, the ceiling is more likely to be broken than to 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 uh, to act as a rejection and when price makes a build up we can uh, we can know that uh, it's more likely to be broken but anyway do not worry we will not trade solely on support and resistance as mentioned before we always look for sell opportunities. So we don't just, ju just sell on, on resistance and buy on support. We always look for sell opportunities around resistance. Uh, uh, that's what Willie uh, asked me uh, like 10 minutes ago. We'll answer this one uh, in the next section. And let's check our chat. Can you do a recap? Um, Yes, uh, first of all, good afternoon, Sia, and glad to have you here. Do not worry, the session will, will be re recorded and will be posted hopefully tonight or tomorrow. Uh, and yes, we will have a Q&A session in like, I don't know, in like 40 minutes, may maybe. Then you can write all your questions and I would be happy to answer that. Okay, let's move forward. Give me a moment. Okay, so we've covered one and three. Now we'll cover support and resistance can be dynamic. Many, many traders think that support and resistance are meant, are meant to be horizontal only. Support and resistance can be dynamic. Let's uh, make an example. Um, here we go. So here we've got a non-horizontal support and resistance. As you can see, this trend line is a downward, is a falling trend line. One, two, three, it has many, many touches. So this one is acting as a potential resistance. As price approaches it, we can look for sell opportunities around it and price is currently sitting around it as well. So we can expect a movement down from it. So in this case, 
here's uh, uh, an upward, uh, here's a, a non-horizontal uh, dynamic, a dynamic resistance, and here's a dynamic support as price uh, uh, trend higher after retesting it. Here we go, one more time and one last time. So if price approaches this area here, we can look for buy opportunities. Okay, so that's for that's for uh, dynamic support and resistance. And when when a support and resistance uh, is broken, the strength of the follow through or the strength of the break depends on how strongly uh, uh, the the support or resistance has been holding. So uh, uh, just like Joseph asked me, if if a resistance is touched like four or five times, we can expect that the break, that the movement, uh, uh, let's say it's, it's a resistance, we can expect that the break above uh, the resistance will have a very strong effect. So let's, here's an example. If we have a resistance with two, two touches only, after break, maybe we've got a movement like this. But if we've got a resistance with like four or five touches, we can expect that after the break, the movement would be aggressive because many traders saw, as, as mentioned before, trader A saw it, traders B saw it, Willie, Jad, everyone saw this resistance. That's why the more traders see uh, a resistance or support, the higher the impact will be uh, after it's broken, uh, broken up or upwards. Okay, let's continue. And, and, and as mentioned before, if, if a resistance is broken, it will, uh, could potentially become support. Why? Okay. Here we go. Why, when a resistance is broken, it will become support? Uh, as mentioned before, uh, uh, in, in a simple manner, we are in a building. If a, a ceiling is broken, uh, we would be in our neighbor's floor, and our ceiling is our neighbor's floor. That make, uh, really, uh, that's makes perfect sense. But let's uh, let's make an example from. Uh, from, from a trading perspective. Here's our whiteboard again. And let's say we've got a resistance here. And here we go. Price approached our resistance one time, second time. So now many traders saw that this uh, red line could act as a potential resistance. That's why many traders will start to look for sell opportunities as price approaches it. And, and we'll cover the section later maybe and put their stop loss around here, right? Just above the resistance area or line, whatever. For the sake of this example, let's say that they, they put their stop loss around here. So what happens in this case, price breaks, uh, breaks our resistance upward and kick the, these sellers out. So, uh, and many traders entered buy around here. So we've got sellers around here and and price kicked them out, uh, hit their stop loss. And we've got buyers around here, very happy with this movement, right? So what really happens is, um, as you all know already, that, uh, that what moves the, the market are the buyers and the sellers, and the buyers and the sellers are driven by emotions, fear, greed, uh, uh, mistakes, uh, guilt, Okay, so what really happens here, why a, a, res, a resistance will become support? Because uh, these sellers here uh, are uh, at this level become a memory of pain for the sellers because price kicked them out, made them lose money, right? And this buyers here, uh, I, I mean, this resistance is now acting as, as memory of gain for these buyers, right? So these are in pain and these are uh, feeling, um, fe feeling happy, excited. Yes, that, that level made me money. That's why after price retests uh, this red line, these sellers are still, because it's not that far from the trades, these sellers are still monitoring 
uh, this uh, line and they will more likely uh, reverse the, their positions from sell to buy. And these buyers, this level is a memory of gain for them. It made them money before, so they will jump in again. So that's why we can see that the impact here wasn't really strong, while here it's a very strong impact. Why? Because the sellers and the buyers are now turned into buyers. So we've got more buyers than, than buyers here. That's why we can see a movement upward, then a small retest to get more liquidity, to get more buy orders, and then get an aggressive movement, uh, movement upward. Okay, that's why uh, a, a, a resistance once broken, it becomes a, a potential uh, support. Okay, so that's it for support and resistance, and we all we already discussed uh, the uh, the. Give me a moment. We discussed the behind price action. We have liquidity, as mentioned before. The banks enter their orders in, in many positions and not in one single position. Let's move forward. Supply and demand. Supply and demand. Uh, many people uh, conf get confused when uh, when uh, approaching supply and demand. They think that supply and demand is the same as support and resistance. These are two completely different uh, tools. Uh, support and resistance, as mentioned before, is when price tries uh, to, to break a level many times or get stuck uh, around a ceiling. That's when we consider a, a potential res uh, resistance. While supply and demand are formed with one single fresh untouched point. Okay, so let's start from, from the basics. First, supply and demand is when you can observe a, a sudden shift between the buyers and the sellers. Okay, so those areas are usually characterized by strong and immediate turning points, explosive movements. Okay, so let's uh, open our whiteboard, for example. So if price was trading like, like this, and then made an aggressive explosive movement upward, then this area here would become, give me a moment. This area here will become a, a demand zone. Why it will become a, a demand zone? Because let's say, uh, let's say Willie just opened his MP4 and saw that price made this aggressive movement upward. So uh, uh, I, I, I don't know about Willie, but I personally wouldn't buy this one around here. Price already made an aggressive movement. First of all, uh, it's, now, it's now, for me, it's expensive. I'm not buying around here. Uh, I've, I feel maybe I have a guilt feeling that I didn't catch this one. Maybe I slept. Uh, I, um, I mean, maybe I overstepped, maybe I, I was at work. Anyway, I opened my MP4 and saw that price has now made an aggressive movement. I'm not buying this one yet. So for me, I will wait for, I will wait for price to retest the original uh, price before this aggressive movement uh, upward happened. So what I would personally do, I wouldn't buy here. I will wait for price to retest this area, and then I will look for buy opportunities again. Okay, so I will not buy around here as I believe I am too late. M maybe, maybe I'm angry. Uh, I'm, I missed this trade. Oh, uh, um, what if I, I would have catched this trade around here, caught this trade around here? So that's how the supply and demand works. As mentioned before, it is always based on buyers and sellers, and the buyers and sellers are driven by their emotions. Okay, so let's uh, open our PowerPoint again. Here we go. So we've got many types of supply and demand. We've got rally-based rally, drop-based drop, drop, and so on. Here is an example covering the four types. What we mean by rally-based rally, the price was making a rally, making a movement upwards, 
and then made a sudden a sudden shift in momentum it was overall bullish and then aggressively made this momentum big red candle downward and here we go many many traders didn't catch this first move so and and of course they will not sell because uh, price already made an aggressive movement downward so that's called a rally base and then drop okay this uh, that's what we call a, a supply zone and here we can also have a supply zone but the difference between the two is that here we have a rally base drop while here we have a drop base drop okay so supply zones are always above price and demand zones are always below price but the difference is rally base drop rally base drop or drop base drop okay and usually supply and demand uh, are after a strong as you can see strong aggressive movement downward or strong aggressive movement upwards we we want we want the buyers or the sellers to to feel a, a memory of uh, pain or guilt that they didn't catch uh, the first move okay so that's why many traders just put uh, sell limits when they when they see this one that they just put uh, sell limits around here let's go back to our original yes uh, sell it around here and when price approaches again it will get filled uh, as my as per my personal playing style i don't put sell limit i don't like limit i don't like pen, pending orders i don't like limits or stop orders i just uh, uh, look as mentioned before i will look for sell opportunities around a, a supply zone and just the opposite for the demand zone in this case it's a rally base rally and here it's a drop base rally okay as you can see an aggressive movement downward so the buyers will not enter just yet will wait for a retest and look for uh, for opportunities for buy or sell opportunities the difference between supply and demand and support and resistance support and resistance is when we see a, a, a number of failed attempts to break or to move beyond a line or, or an area. While supply and demand are, as mentioned before, are a fresh untouched base. One single fresh untouched base. Okay, so let's uh, take an example. Let's open our whiteboard. Here we go, again. As mentioned, uh, as mentioned before, price tried to break above it, uh, again, uh, below it. Here, after two failed attempts, we can consider that starting from here, we can start to look for buy opportunities as starting from here. We consider that our red line uh, uh, may act as a potential support, right? While, while uh, if, if you compare it to, to a, a demand zone, price was going downward and then make a base or a small range and then an explosive movement upward. So from this single untouched point, a fresh point, we can consider that here we have a demand zone. So from one single untouched point, we've got a demand zone and we can start to look for buy opportunities. Now, now I know, I know, I know what you're thinking. Maybe if price makes another uh, um, another swing around here then and only then our previous demand is now turned into support as we have two failed attempts to break below it so so maybe sometimes you can see that you can have a demand around support but it doesn't mean that a demand is a support so if, for example here if price moves downwards and then makes an aggressive movement upward, then from here, we've got a demand zone, right? Because we've got an aggressive movement upward, but that doesn't mean that a demand is always a support. It happens that sometimes we have a demand around support, but it's not the, the, always the case. So 
price moves downward, then aggressive movement upward, that's a demand. Price moves downward many times, failing to break below it. Now we have a support, okay? That's the difference between support and resistance. Let's move forward. Okay, I'll, I'll take a little break. Um, and if you have any questions before we proceed uh, to our next section. Do you guys, do you guys have any questions? Okay, perfect. Let's check our chat. Okay, see, as asking my question is that the rich TL indicator help in drawing supply and demand? Yes and no. <laughs> we'll talk about, about rich TL indicator uh, maybe later. This section is not about it. Uh, but yes, we will cover, uh, I, I, will, uh, I will try my best to explain to you. Uh, rich air indicator has an option to draw supply and demand, but but as to our tra trading style, you don't really need uh, 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 rich TL to draw your, your supply and demand. Anyway, we'll talk about uh, this one uh, very soon. Okay. Do you guys have any more questions or we can proceed? Okay, let's wait for one more minute. Which time frame you draw support and resistance? See, as asking. We draw support and resistance from weekly and, and daily time frames. As per our trading style, uh, we, we, we call these uh, support and resistance, we call them key levels. We, we draw our key levels on higher time frames and then we zoom into lower time frames and look for potential buy or sell opportunities around these key levels. Great, see, I'm happy to I'm happy to hear that. It seems that that you you've been following us for a while on Telegram or Trading View. I'm happy to hear that. Uh, Rich, yes, Joseph. Uh, when I see your videos on Instagram and YouTube and on Telegram, you use simple strategies, uh, uh, support and resistance, and use the MACD to. Uh, to identify yes. a divergence. Yes. Uh, this, uh, that's what you use always when you are trading alone or you simplify it for us to, to see it? Yeah. You only use this right. simple Right, thing. right, right. Uh, it's a very, very good question, Joseph. Um, uh, you, you will see in and, and, uh, and, and, uh, and the sections um, that we are going to, to, to go after now that we will use, we will use, usually use many tools to identify a potential setup. And, and, and uh, from on my weekly overview for the free channel on Instagram or Telegram, I'm, I'll tr I'm trying to use uh, as simple tools as possible. Uh, uh, um, 
I don't know how to say it in English, but but when, when you join when you join our community, premium members get uh, if you want get customized strategies that that can't be found anywhere else. And these customized strategies I can't really share it on Instagram or or, or, or Telegram because uh, first of all it's it's a uh, it's it's for premium members only. And 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 anyway, if I share these customized strategies. Uh, um, uh, the uh, I don't want to say the 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 uh, free members wouldn't really understand the idea behind it or or what I'm really talking about. So that's why I'm try to simplify it uh, as soon as possible when I'm when I'm analyzing something for the free channel uh, using tools like support and resistance uh, and diversions and stuff like this to make it as simple as possible but yes we 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 actually use the diversion support and resistance supply and demand in our trading style but we also have a couple of customized strategies that that will give us more more opportunities is asking does a premium member choose one or it's it's a must to learn all strategies um, you, you know uh, um, it's not about it's not just about a strategy that you learn bl and follow blindly forex is uh, is is about a full uh, a, a full course if you want if you want to call it from a to z that you have to go over uh, to go over, over it step by step and learn the basics first, and then build up on on your on your knowledge and skills, and uh, um, and 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 as per our trading style, our our trading style is uh, it includes many strategies because uh, it is flexible to work on different market conditions. So if I follow just one strategy, uh, uh, ch chances are that that during during specific times. I will not find many setups and so on. And during during other times, I will perform very good. But during during different market conditions, the my 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 trading performance will vary from from uh, from period to another period. So as for our trading style, you have to learn all all the strategies that we teach, as uh, it's it's our entire trading style. Okay, we, we don't just give you one strategy, we give you our entire trading style. And, uh, and, and I believe that that's what's making, making it more powerful. But that's not just only one entry, one, uh, one, one strategy. I'm trying my, my best to, to answer with, uh, with my simple English. Hope I'm uh, your understanding. Do you have any more questions or we can proceed with the next uh, section about trend lines, tricks, and tips. Okay, see ya, great. <laughs> yes, yes, same here. We're trying our best. Okay, let's move forward. Here we go. So now we are going to cover trend lines, tips, and tricks. First, uh, can can anyone tell me how how do we draw trend lines? What are trend lines characteristics? Um, I want you to to answer this question. Can, do anyone know how to draw trend lines, uh, to draw valid trend lines? Uh, it is a, bu a bullish or a bearish uh, rally where okay. uh, if we draw the trend line, several peaks should be, almost three peaks should be uh, touching the right. trend line that we nice. drew. And uh, it should good. have uh, a 40 degree angle, if I'm not mistaken. Nice, nice, nice. Very good. Then valid ones touch three times. You are right also here. 
great. Uh, that's the first characteristic of a trend line. Let's open out our whiteboard. Here we go. Price must break previous high and low. <laughs> Very good. It seems, seems that you are watching all, all my videos, Joseph and Sia. Okay, so to, to, to have a trend line like this, to have a valid trend line, first of all, we need three touches. One, let's say one, two, and three. Starting from here, we can consider to have a valid trend line. Okay, two touches. Here we have an, an idea, a potential trend line forming. But to be valid, we need at least three touches. So one, two, and three. Starting from here, the strand line is valid. That's our first uh, tip, our first rule. Our second rule is that the distance between, let me change color. The distance between the first swing and second swing has to be almost symmetrical to the distance between the second swing and third swing. Okay, so for example, this trend line is not valid. One, two, and three. So this trend line is not valid. Here we go. As the two first, the first two swings are very close to, to each other. So these two are, are considered as one swing only. So one and two. We need a third swing to consider it as a valid trend line. Okay, so first one is that we need three swings. The second rule is that the distance between the two has, has to be symmetrical. Okay, so th that's our uh, second rule. The, the third rule is, uh, is its, its angle. So if, if we have a trend line that's too steep, that's not a valid trend line. The trend line has to be like from, from this angle Till this angle max. If it's too steep, then it's not a valid trend line. Uh, let's check our PowerPoint again. Then how to draw trend lines properly, we've already covered it. We have two types of, of trend lines. We have the long-term trend lines and short-term trend lines. The long-term trend lines act as rejection and not as entry on its break we can find our trend lines from daily and weekly and the short-term trend lines act as trigger we can find it on h4 h1 and m30 let's uh, give you an example about uh, this one here we go so here we've got a trend line uh, just the previous example that we gave here we have a trend line from daily or weekly we can consider starting from here here we've got a potential trend line and we can start to look for sell opportunities around it. We can consider it a valid uh, from weekly and daily time frame from two swings only. Let me delete HTL. Okay, so starting from here, we can, we can start to look for sell opportunities around it. As from daily and weekly time frame, we will use uh, uh, the trend lines as, as potential key levels, just like the horizontal support and resistance, and not for entry on its break upward. That's why it doesn't have to have three swings before we consider it valid, Un unless you want to enter uh, on a trend line break upwards from daily and weekly, then you will have to wait for your trade for like one or two months. Okay, so it depends on your trading style. If you are, if you are a, a position trader, then you can enter buy or sell from uh, on, on weekly time frames. Price moon, you draw. Yes, very good question. Sia, Sia is asking, do you draw your your trend lines on wick or or, or candle bodies? Uh, uh, I, I will answer this question with with one word. The one, one word is is confluence. Okay, so let's say. Let, let's zoom in. Let's zoom in a little bit. Here we go. So here we are connecting the wicks, right? But why? Because let's say, let, let me draw a new line. Okay, let's delete these two. 
and let me draw a new line. Let's say we want to draw this one like this. If, if we draw it like this, it, it wouldn't touch this point, right? So we want to make it higher and then hopefully it will touch, here we go. Okay, so it, it depends. There, there, there is no uh, one way to draw your trend lines. As, as mentioned before, trend lines are just like support and resistance. They are areas and not laser lines. Okay, so we, we, we draw our trend line, but you will see uh, in the next section, we will not enter after a break above it, as trend lines are not enough to, for, for, to take buy and sell opportunities from it. So the, the way we draw our trend lines to be valid, we just draw it in a way to connect as many swings as, as possible. So sometimes I draw it, sometimes I make it a, a little bit lower, maybe the swing, or for example, maybe the swing is, is like this. Okay, so uh, assuming that the swing is that high, then we'll draw our trend line this way to connect the swing, okay? But in this particular case, the, here's our swing, then we'll make this one a little bit higher to, to touch this one. Then starting from here, we can start to look for sell opportunities. Here we go, if we extend a little bit, here we go, here we go. So. As you can see, it's not broken. By broken, we mean um, a candle close above it. Then it wouldn't be valid. We, we uh, uh, candle close above the trend line uh, 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 are, are not tolerated. The, the trend line uh, shouldn't be broken. So here, this trend line is, is from daily. We can look for sell opportunities around here. And if we move forward, here we go, this one is broken, but as mentioned before, uh, on daily we don't enter by uh, after it's broken. That's why when we zoom out, we can see that we can make it a little bit higher to connect these two swings. Okay, so it's, it's, all, it's all about confluence. For now, I made it lower like this, I made it higher like this. Here we go, to connect as many points as possible. Here we go. So, so now price is sitting uh, around our trend line. So we'll be looking for sell opportunities. And yes, it's not broken upward yet. Anyway, we will not enter buy on spec upward. Why? Because trend lines are just like support and resistance. They are zones and not laser lines. Okay. So we'll be looking for objective sell setups around this area here as price is rejecting our upper, uh, our upper trend line unless price breaks upward aggressively just like an horizontal resistance then we'll consider that this one is broken and then we'll be looking for objective buy setups as uh, this resistance is now turned into support we treat it just like uh, uh, an horizontal support and resistance and in this particular example we also have an horizontal uh, and an horizontal support and resistance in green as you can see adding more confluence so price was going upward as price was around here, we were waiting for price to get around here. As mentioned before, we only look for sell opportunities as price approach our resistance. So if price is around here, our next resistance or our nearest resistance is around here. So we will not look for sell opportunities unless price approaches it. Now it's sitting around it. So we'll zoom into lower time frames around this area and look for potential trend following as uh, uh, the overall trend is down from a daily perspective and the potential set, uh, setups unless, as mentioned before, price breaks it upward, breaks our resistance and our trend line upward, then and only then we will not buy, as mentioned before, uh, we'll consider that our, uh, our resistance in red and our resistance in green uh, are now turned into support and we'll be looking for buy opportunities as price approaches it okay so in this particular example if we zoom into lower time frames we can see i, I already i already sent uh, the, the setup on the free channel last week we are waiting for a break below this channel we've got one two three four five many ma many touches but we are not ready to sell yet as we are waiting for our trigger 
which would be a break below the last one. Here we go. Let's make this one in orange. So uh, currently on AUD CAD, we are waiting for a momentum a break below this area to, to sell AUD CAD. For now, our low, as you can see, our lower red trend line is not broken. Our last low making higher low, higher low, right? Higher low. So we are still overall bullish. M maybe it will make like uh, three, four uh, higher lows uh, uh, and would be, would be still overall bullish. So we want the sellers to prove to us that they are uh, uh, now in control, that, that we have a shift in momentum from, from bullish to bearish after a break below the, uh, below the last swing that forms around it. And uh, since, since we've covered this one, let's delete this area, give me a moment. Here we go. So uh, a, a mistake traders usually make is, let's say they, they draw their trend line like this. So starting from here, they consider that the trend line is broken and they enter sell uh, on its break. As mentioned, support and resistance, whether it's a, a horizontal or non-horizontal, they are, we have to treat them as zones and not laser lines. So for example, you, you, can, you, 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 can, you can visualize it like this. So in order for our uh, trend line to be broken, it has to break the last swing. Because as we all know, that if price is making higher highs, right? So here's our, uh, uh, our uh, uh, low, uh, higher low, right? Higher low, higher low, higher low. Here we go. Then it makes uh, it made a, a little uh, an overextended low. That's our new low. And starting from here, the the bullish trend resumes uh, uh, its strength, and it's currently still pushing upward. So price is still making higher highs, as you can see, higher highs and higher lows, right? Here we go. So now, now price tried to make, here we go, high, 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 right? So now, currently price failed to make a new high. We've got a high here, that's our last high, but price failed to trade higher. Instead, we've got a shooting star, as you can see here. Here we go. Give me a moment. Here we go. So price made a high, then tried to make break higher, but couldn't trade higher and made a lower high. So that's one, uh, one early alert that a potential reversal might happen. Okay, potential might. Nothing is clear. We don't have a trigger just yet. We are, we are, we are, we, we, we've added in the decade on, on our watch list as now we have a potential reversal as price couldn't make a higher high, okay? So starting from here, we'll start to look for, for sell opportunities. And as mentioned, we are still, uh, unless price breaks below our last low, we would be overall bullish. But that's, that's an early alert that, that a potential reversal might happen. Our trigger would be after a momentum candle close below. And as usual, for those who know uh, our trading style, that's our entry, right? After a momentum close below it, our stop loss goes just above the last swing high and we target a two to one risk to reward ratio. Okay, let's check the chat. Okay, Sia asked <laughs> three questions. Let's, let's uh, go over it one by one. Um, valid, okay. Okay, the trend line as zone is something I don't hear. I don't hear from Forex mentors. Have you tested with years of data? How big uh, is a trend line zone approximately? It looks like a head and shoulder, right, exactly. Okay. Uh, okay. Thank you, Jad, for answering uh, uh, Sia. Um, and for those who don't know, Jad is. Is, uh, is, is, is my partner and, and the signalist and, uh, and in RichTL. So if you have any questions, feel free to ask uh, and, and he would answer your questions uh, on the chat. Uh, to, to answer your, your question, uh, Sia, 
uh, above uh, about uh, support and resistance as zones, right? Because uh, just just like uh, horizontal support and resistance, uh, not non horizontal support and resistance are also uh, uh, we also have to treat uh, them as zones because it, it is no different than horizontal uh, horizontal support and resistance. But anyway, in, in any way, we will not enter sell on uh, 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 on the uh, the trend line break downward. So, for example, a, a mistake traders uh, usually make is that after a trend line is broken, they enter sell. Uh, that's uh, th that's not and uh, that's not enough to consider a shift in momentum. Okay, that's why we have a filter, and you already know it, I guess, which we call it the last swing standing, which is, which is also a customized strategy uh, 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 that you can't find it anywhere else. We always, we don't sell on the trend line break. We always wait for the last swing. We call it the last swing standing, okay? Uh, we wait for, uh, for a momentum can be closed below it to sell. Because if the last low is not broken downward, means that the buyers are still in control. And maybe this movement downward is just, is just a, a, a simple retest before the, the, trend, uh, the, the uptrend resumes uh, uh, its, its movement upwards. Okay? So even if we have a trend line, we all, our entry is always um, after the break below the last one. Okay, so hope I answered your question. Uh, great. Hey, Rich. Yes. Yes, okay, you. See you again. Yes, yes, yes. Yes. Uh, I, I appreciate your, your answers, and uh, I. I do agree with the ten line zone method. Ne? Great. Great. <laughs> Yes, the only thing that I thought I was going to ask, out of your strategies, do you have a strategy that focuses more on the trade traders' side, when either when the trade traders have, have, have taken the wrong side of the market? Right. If they have sold right. instead of buying, is there a strategy that focuses mainly on trade traders? Yes, 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 yes. We, we, we always wait for extra confirmation from the last swing. Okay, uh, 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 just like we've, we've mentioned before, the, uh, that, that every candle is a battle between the buyers and the sellers. So, um, um, uh, so a bunch of candles is, is a war between the buyers and the sellers. So if we've got many, the buyers are winning uh, all, these ba all these battles, means that they've won this entire war. Okay, so he's got one war, he was got a war, so, uh, so, and uh, uh, let's, let's, uh, let's think about it this way. If you are in a war and, and you've won this far, let's say you are in city, in city A, and here we have city uh, B. So if, if you are, if you are going upwards, you, you, ha you have army around here and you are going upwards. So uh, uh, after a couple of uh, after a couple of miles, after a couple of miles, you you you, you just build build at a checkpoint. You build a wall, okay? So you've built a wall here. You've built a wall here. So every new low that, that you create is a wall, is, is a checkpoint where where no one can where no one can get any lower unless they they defeat. Uh, uh, this uh, uh, this wall here, okay. So uh, uh, imagine that you, the the bulls are uh, are are an army and they are pushing upward through small battles and through small wars, okay. So war winning the war and then and then the sellers try to uh, 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 try to fight back, but they couldn't break the last checkpoint, right? And then the buyers were taking a break to, 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 to get more strength and get more army and then tried uh, and then continues their movement uh, forward. 
So every new low in an uptrend, every new low is a checkpoint, checkpoint, right? Checkpoint. So here's our last checkpoint. That's why we call it the last swing standing. Okay, that's the last swing standing before the, the sellers uh, take take control, and to be to be able to take control, they have to break below it. So once they break below it, then and only then we can consider that the sellers are somehow in control, and and now the trend uh, is more bearish than bullish and a lower low and lower highs bearish trends would be expected, right? Okay, so chat. Okay, perfect. Yes, not short. Yes, right, right. We always wait for three clues and we wait for the last swing standing break. That's our trigger. We don't sell around here. We don't sell around here. These areas here are not enough. So, for, for example, you, you, you are telling me that maybe you will sell around here, right? Maybe you will sell around here, right? So, these are not enough. We, we don't enter sell just because uh, price approach uh, is approaching a resistance. We we'll always wait for extra confirmation. We we'll always we want the sellers to prove to us that they are in full control. We don't just sell because we we, we want we want to catch uh, this pair uh, at its top. Okay. Uh, and anyway, we, we, we will check more about the confluence uh, thing. Uh, hopefully, in the section in the next section. Okay, so let, let's move forward. Let's share my screen again. Okay, so we've covered trend lines and we'll skip trend line, we'll skip chart patterns for now as we are running out of time. Okay, and now we've got, uh, we've got two more sections, the truth about trading, Yes, yes, yeah, exactly, exactly, yeah. Because we always wait for extra confirmation. We, we always uh, enter when, uh, when the sellers already moved and broke the last swing. Okay, we, we don't try, um, that's a mistake uh, many traders make. They try to pick the, the, the highest points and sell from it. They like to pick peaks and, and, and bottoms, which, which is really not possible uh, in trading, okay? Okay, so we have one more question and we will continue. Now, can we have an objective view about this? Yes, Eli, exactly. That's what we are going to talk about now. Very good question. Okay, so the truth about trading, uh, trading is not like a touch quick scheme. I believe that you all know that. Trading is nothing but a game of, of probabilities. All we need to do is to have an edge over the market, is to have, uh, is to put the odds in our favor. Okay, we don't have control on anything. We consider ourselves risk managers more than, than just traders. Okay, so all what we have control on is our risk. The market can go up, can go down, whatever, uh, however it wants, whenever it wants. Okay. We only can control our risk. And the only way to make money in Forex is to have an edge, is to find a strategy, an objective strategy that, that, uh, that is proven to, to, to make results, to make results and in a way that when we win, we win more than when we lose. And that when we enter a trade, we have a probability to win more than we lose. Okay, we'll talk about this. That's the truth about trading. Do not listen to anyone that, 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 that tells you that they've got the secret to the success in trading. There is no, no secret. There are five rules that you have to follow. If you follow these five, what we call them, golden rules in trading, uh, 
uh, you, you will never blow an account again. Okay, so rule number one, only invest money you can afford to lose. I know that you've heard it many times over the internet. Uh, every broker says it in, 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 uh, in its disclaimer, and every mentor uh, says it that, yes, don't invest money you can afford to lose, but, what we, what, um, but they don't explain why. Okay, so that's rule number one. We will explain why in a bit. Rule number two, we only risk a small portion of our, our account per trade. Okay, we only risk one or two percent max per trade. We enter with a fixed risk per trade, not fixed stop loss and pips, not fixed, uh, not fixed lot size. Okay, if, if, if you don't know how, we will cover uh, this one maybe in the next webinar or or if you want to know, you, you, you can just drop me a message on Telegram and I would be glad to, to share it with you. Enter with one with fixed risk per trade. So if you enter your USD, let's say buy, okay, you have to lose the same amount of money if you enter uh, 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 GBP USD sell, okay? So every trade you enter has to have equal amount of risk, okay? So a, a mistake traders make uh, uh, is, is, that, is that they enter with fixed lot or, or enter with fixed stop loss and pips like they enter with 40 pips stop loss. 40 pips stop loss uh, and, and under, market, under, under a specific market condition, it may be a big stop loss. And 40 pips stop loss under, uh, under different market conditions, it may be a very small stop loss. So you are not taking into consideration which time frame, which pair, which which is market trending, ranging, okay? So you have you have to you have to put you have to think about risk the other way around. First of all, you identify where you have to put your stop loss, and then you 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 have to enter. It depends where, where your stop loss is. You enter with one percent risk per trade. Anyway, uh, uh, let's move forward. If you don't know how to enter with fixed risk per trade, you can, I, as mentioned, you can connect with me uh, via Telegram or after the session. Uh, number three, we enter three confluences trade. That's what uh, Sila, uh, Sila asked me. See, I guess. So uh, number four, uh, number three and four are, as mentioned before, is that we we have an edge over the market we have an edge over the market using these two blocks okay so first we we'll invest money we can afford to lose we'll know about this uh, in a bit one percent risk three confluence state what we mean by three confluence state the power of confluence what does confluence really mean confluence represents two or more things coming together at the same time Okay, how can, can we, how can we benefit from confluence and trading? When we were kids, most of us has this dream job to be, to be, a, to be a detective. Uh, uh, we are all the detectives when it comes to Forex. We, we just gather many pieces of information, of evidence to, pa to back up our conclusion. So let's say a detective looks for fingerprints, for, for activities of, of suspects, witnesses, uh, records, documents, anything, just to back up his, uh, his conclusion. One clue, let's say, let's say for example, uh, uh, he, he saw that he've got a piece of, of, of black hair on the ground, it doesn't mean that, that, every, uh, that, that, that every person with, uh, with the black hair uh, uh, has to be the suspect. Okay, so one clue may be irrelevant. Okay, so we have to gather as many clues as possible to, 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 make, a, to make a judgment. And uh, when it comes to Forex, we, on, we recommend at least three clues be, be, before considering uh, a, a potential trade. Let's take a practical example. Let's say trader A trades only on candlesticks pattern, trader B trades on supply and demand, and, and so on. If trader D enters on chart patterns and found a double uh, bottom pattern, and he enters buy, while trader E, C, and A 
so a, a sell signal okay so so we've got three types of traders selling while only one type of trader buying so it really makes sense if price will just fall and and, and go downward because we've got more sellers than buyers right so to have an edge over the market we have to enter when we have at least three things lined up to together for example if we have if we have a divergence uh, that's why joseph asked me if we have a price sitting around resistance we have a divergence and price forms a double top then here we have three confluences because trader c trades on resistance is looking for sell trader d trading uh, on charts chart patterns is looking for sell and trader e trading on divergence looking for sell so we've got more sellers than buyers then and only then we consider that uh, our sell setup is uh, is uh, a strong one and as mentioned before we always wait for our trigger which is a a candle close below below uh, in this case because we have a double top be below our double top neckline okay so that's how we put the, the odds in our favor by entering when we have three clues that's telling me to sell or, or buy a, a currency pair okay second our clues when it comes to when it comes to trading are so support and resistance psychological levels and so on divergence chart patterns Fibonacci tracements and so on okay so we need three reasons uh, uh, to take the trade and a maximum one but preferably zero not to take the trade okay let's move forward um, uh, our second edge is going to be uh, through risk ma management we always we always enter with two to one risk to reward ratio for those who don't know, risk to reward ratio are uh, the ratio difference between the potential loss and potential profit. So if, if your take profit is 50 pips, while your stop loss is 100 pips, then your risk to reward ratio is 0 0.5. And you have to win two trades to, to, two trades to recover uh, one loss, right? Because when you lose, uh, in this example, you lose 100 pips, but when you win, you win 50 pips. So two wins, would be equal to one loss and and that's and that's a, a very bad to reward ratio in our case as mentioned before we always target a two to one to reward ratio for example if our stop loss is 100 pips our our target would be 200 pips so uh, just like the great george soros said uh, uh, and it's not whether you are right or wrong that's important but how much money you make when you are right and how much money you lose when you are wrong okay so we want to enter trades that that uh, that in a way to win to uh, to win more when we win than when, when we lose okay so that's our our second uh, our second edge first to enter three confluence straight and then we enter two to one risk to reward ratio so now you're asking how about these two first rules only invest money you can afford to lose because if you invest money you can't afford to lose you will get emotional and you will not wait for these three confluences you will just uh, start to enter trades randomly or, or, or you, you would be you would be very emotional that you will not wait for for your, your target to be hit which would be double your stop loss so you will not follow your rules objectively if 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 you need the money on your, your account to put food on the table that's one risk only a small portion of your account <laughs> of your account per trade because if you risk like like 10 percent per trade chances are you will also get emotional and you will not wait for your trades and you will not wait for for your targets uh, and 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 uh, or you will enter trades that uh, that you are not supposed uh, to enter okay that's our for our first two rules our fifth rule is emotional stability so if you are not emotional uh, emotionally stable for example you have an exam if you are a student 
or or, or if you have uh, if, if you have personal problems at work or or, or 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 with your parents or your spouse chances are you will get emotional as well and you will not follow your rules you will not wait for this and you will not wait for the reward so if you have these five golden rules you, you would be on on the right track okay so that's it last but not least the importance of a trading plan as mentioned before we will, we will have to enter three confluences but how you will identify when you will enter how you will enter what is your trigger when you will consider it as a valid setup how you will approach trading all, all these questions have to be well defined and written in your trading plan a trading plan defines defines what's supposed to be done where why when and how okay it, it covers everything from trader personality to uh, personal expectations risk, risk management rules and and risk uh, 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 and technical entries okay so uh, a trading plan will help limit trading mistakes and minimize your, your losses and it, it will certainly remove uh, any bad decisions any bad decision making in the heat of the moment because when you are in a trade and the market is moving upward and downward very fast chances are you 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 will tend to close your trades or or you you will you will you will panic okay so if you don't have well defined rules that's written in a piece of paper and that you've already back tested and and you are confident about it you you will you will get emotional and you will crash after the first two stop loss uh, stop loss in a row okay so if you have one stop loss that's okay two three stop loss in a row you will you will lose confidence in yourself in your skills and in your trading okay and 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 that's what traders uh, really do they uh, uh, it's what we call uh, um, the system hopping they, they just jump from strategy to strategy they follow a strategy later on after two stop loss in a row that they say okay then the strategy is not good i will search for a new one or, or or for a new filter they start to add more indicators more rules and that's when trading becomes becomes complicated okay so you have to have a trading plan for, for example as per our trading plan we always draw our support and resistance on daily and weekly we zoom into lower time frames and look for three confluences then we consider it a valid setup but we will not enter until the last swing is broken downward okay that, that's that's a glimpse of our trading plan every single detail is written in our trading plan and all you need to do is to follow it objectively and uh, and speaking about uh, ob objectivity most importantly your rules has to be objective okay because be, be, because if you for, for example if you if you if you have trend lines in your, in your trading plan but what you draw them differently every time you don't know how to trend your trend lines you don't know how to connect your swings uh, uh, chances are you you will not you will not feel confident about your trend lines and thus you you will you will not follow your trading plan because you are, you don't trust uh, you don't trust the way you draw trend lines so everything included in your trading plan whether it's divergence supply and demand trend lines chart patterns anything included has to be objective 100% okay because we, we, we don't we, we don't want sub subjectivity and emotions to kick in while you are trading okay and and for, for those who asked asked me about about rich tl indicator that's exactly why we created uh, rich tl to help us uh, draw our trend lines in an objective manner uh, i don't know if, if you saw it first let me let me share my screen again I don't know if you first saw it. Let me indicators. Here we go. So here we have, or here as well, here we have rich TL on our chart, and we will use uh, rich TL to draw our trend line, support and resistance, and so on. 
in a way that we will not uh, second guess our trend lines. If we have three dots, we can draw our trend lines. If we have three swings, if we can connect at least three swings, then we can consider that we have a valid trend line. And here's one more example on, here, here we have this one. Also, uh, it works on MT4 and on trading view and also on, on MT5. You, you can, uh, here, we, here we have our first, second, and third, and we have a fourth one before. Then we consider that we have a, an objective resistance zone. And here we can look for sell opportunities around this area. Unless price picks it upward aggressively, then our uh, resistance will become a potential support and we'll be looking for objective buy setups on the three test. If we zoom in to lower time frames, because we are on, on daily here, on weekly, as you can see as, as well, we've got one, two, three, and four as well. So here we are looking for sell opportunities. As you can see from here, if we zoom into lower time frames, we can see that we've got an objective channel. So one, two, three, that's the only trend line we can draw. You, you can also identify objective head and shoulders, double top, just anything. We you, you draw everything objectively using HDR. So for now, just like NZT cut, we are waiting for a momentum candle close below this swing because it's the last swing that touches our trend line to sell and that the cut. Okay, so uh, that's it for me. If you have any questions, you we still have like 10 or 15 minutes. Uh, if you have any questions, I would be more than happy to answer uh, all your questions. Do you guys have any questions? Hello, Rich. Yes, hello. hello. Yes, here. Yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, I do have some questions. I think there are two or three. Yes, sure. Sure, see. Yes, uh, the first one is based on the candle that you wait on your last swing, on, on your last swing or last yes. Piece, whatever. Yes, yes, yes. So is the, does it have standing. to be a strong? Yes. Does does it have to be a strong candle or yes. does it, uh, even if it's an indecision candle or a rejection, you yes. consider it? That's the, that's the first question. Eh? Nice, nice. Uh, yes, it it, then, it, ha it has to be what we call a momentum candle. So for example, okay. let me give you an example. As I always say, we wait for a momentum uh, candle close below our last swing. For example, in this particular uh, one on NZT cut, give it a moment, we are waiting for, here we go. We are waiting for a momentum. So for example, here's a momentum candle. Okay, this one in red. So we are waiting. Okay, what? For but if you get half of that candle size, what you won't enter. If you get half of that moment and candle, you won't yes, enter. Yes, 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 yes. Yes, I, 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 I half of it like, like this. Yes, I will still enter. But, but, but we okay. don't don't want a candle with a big wick from down. And not just like not just like this one. If this one, okay, this one closed here, we don't want to enter. We all, if this candle closes. Uh, be below it, then yes, we will enter this one as we need a moment okay. just like this one or this one. Okay, if, okay. If, uh, okay. if it's like this one, there's not a momentum candle, it's a small, it's a small candle. Okay, oh, yes. if, yes. if yes. it's like this one, also will not enter as we have a big quick from the downside. We need a big, like this one in red, we need a big okay. momentum candle. So we, we want the sellers to prove to us that they are strong enough to close below the swing. Okay? Okay, can I go to my second question? Yes, sure, sure. Yes, uh, for me, uh, I think I'm, for, for now, I'm more interested in day trading. Eh? 
Okay. But as 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 I have as I as I can see from your your videos from Instagram, even on YouTube. So your stop loss is above there. I think your stop loss is gonna be very wide for a day trader like me, or maybe even a scalper. Is there a way that we have, even if you don't really reveal it now, a way that we that you do make use of to make a smaller stop loss? Or yes, is it yes, a yes. must to, to get that above that high? Yes, yes. Very good questions here. Uh, as for our trading style, we zoom into H1 and M30 minimum. Okay. We, we don't zoom in more than an M30 because, uh, because, uh, because as you know, the lower the time frame, the more the noise. Okay, so uh, if, if, you are, if you are getting started, I recommend that you spend most of your time above M30, H1, H4, or daily. Okay, I don't really recommend that you start your trading journey uh, on, on lower time frames because you will learn trading the, the, uh, uh, the with 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 your emotions uh, um, uh, interfering in, in, in your learning curve so first start with uh, with uh, with smooth uh, time frames so, so that you will get used to uh, to uh, to, uh, to, to 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 our rules to our to our trading style and then if you want to zoom into M15 and M5, yes, you can still apply the same rules on lower time frames. I, I have like two, two or three students that, that, that are now trading on lower time frames. But, but as mentioned before, if you want to zoom into lower time frames, you can expect uh, more noise and, and you have to expect that you, you will get more losses than, uh, than, than, than usual. For example, if we enter the 10 trades, okay, we're expecting uh, to win at least five and lose five, right? But with a two to one risk to reward ratio, so, so we are still in profit. But if you zoom into lower time frames, if you enter 10 trades, you can expect that that out of 10, you will win four and, and you will lose six, okay? So, uh, uh, so uh, maybe the risk reward would be the same, but the, your win rate will, will get lower. Okay, so it depends on your trading style. If you find yourself on lower time frames, then yes, uh, uh, it depends if you have time and, uh, and, and you are emotionally strong enough to handle uh, the fast movements on lower time frames, then yes, you can zoom in. 100%, 100%. I like the way that we have answered it. It's so clear. And my last question is, Great, is yeah. that uh, I have noticed uh, from your videos, most, most of the time, you you already drawn your let's say your your resistance or even support on your daily time frame or even weekly yes, or yes. your trend line. So in most of the time, I see you or you always more like waiting for the market to get there and then zoom up and then change time frame to the lower time frame. Then from there, that's where you look for break of structure and so on and so forth. So for me, my question is: Do you ever catch a trend up to the? higher time frame resistance or higher time frame trend or you just end at the reversal of, of those trends or you can nice, catch trades nice. in the nice. middle before you hit that resistance. Right, right. It, it, it's a very good question, uh, Sia. Look, uh, as you can see here from, from our, our daily time frame, okay, if we zoom in a little bit, give me a moment. I don't want to mess, to mess with my levels. Okay, 0 0.89, very good. Okay, if we zoom in, Just give me a moment to delete these ones, not to distract our visual. Okay, so here we are looking for sell opportunities. Why? Because price is approaching our upper level, right? So uh, uh, we, we, from daily and weekly, we get an overall idea about where price is going or, or where we expect price to go, okay? So we always wait for, for uh, uh, price to approach a strong level. For example, here we have a support as price forms one, two, and three, right? So starting from here, we can we, we could catch this movement upward. So for now, price is trading inside this. Let me check, give a moment. Here we go. We've got another one here, right? So we've got one, two, and three. So starting from here, we can look for buy opportunities. So buy here, 
right? So here we were looking for buy, but price breaks it downward and reaches our lower support. So we're looking for buy and here buy, right? So and, and let's not 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 bother about history. And for now, price is currently sitting around here, right? So uh, that that's that's our building, okay? And he was got another one. Let me draw it. Here we go. Okay, so we've got one here. And as I always mention, uh, I always say it's a zone, not a line, right? So here we go. If you want to draw it as zones, here we go. And here as well. Okay, so our charts, our building will look like this. We also have one here. <laughs> but anyway, let's not uh, draw so many lines. If price is sitting around here, we are waiting for sell and buy. If price is sitting around here, we are waiting for sell and buy, right? If price managed to break its upward, then it would be sitting in this floor, right? That's our, uh, uh, that's our floor and that's our ceiling, okay? No matter if, if, if it's a trend following setup or, or, or a reversal setup. In this particular example, price is overall bearish and it happens to be that uh, it's a reversal from a short-term perspective, but it's a trend continuation from, from, from a long-term perspective, right? So we are looking for trend following. Unless price breaks it upward, then we will not buy as mentioned before, as, uh, as now we consider that our resistance is broken and we'll be looking for buy opportunities around here. In this case, price is making higher highs and higher lows, higher highs again, yes, higher yes, lows, yes. then we will enter after a trend following from the shorter, short term, uh, sh short term perspective. I, I like it so much the way that you, you explain it, but now you have answered a little bit of saying like, uh, if it's overall bearish, you don't buy it all. That's what I wonder, yes or no. If it's overall bearish, or bearish on high time frame, you, look, you still look for buys. Yes, or yes, great, frames. great, great, great. Very good question. Yes, we, we look for buys if, if price is sitting around a key level. For example, this one is overall bearish, right? It's overall bearish. We looked for buy around here as price was sitting around support. And we looked, buy, we looked for buy around here as price is already oversold, overextended to the downside then we, will, we expect that price will, 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 will resume to its mean, which would be around here, okay? So even though a price is sitting, is overall bearish, but we can look for buy opportunities, but of course, not, we will not be looking for buy opportunities around here, as price is sitting in the middle of nowhere, then, 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 then we, we wouldn't have a strong level to consider to consider it a key level to look for buy opportunities. So it doesn't really matter if price is over or bullish or bearish. It, uh, what really matters is if it's sitting around a key level or not, whether it's a non-horizontal level or, or an horizontal support. And okay. Hope I answered your question. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm, 100, I'm 100 percent. I'm beyond satisfied right now. Great, great. Thank you so I'm, much. I'm Thank very you so happy much. to hear that. You, so you, you are more than welcome. You. I respect but, you. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I don't, don't know what to say. <laughs> I, I hope to see you in, in our community soon. See, yeah. I, I, I really, really like the way you think and 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 the way you you, you appreciate uh, the. The, the information here. Uh, so we, we've got Eli asking about, can you please tell more the tools you're using? How is it possible to get it? Okay, so uh, to, to answer Eli's question, and if you have any more questions, guys, please drop it in the chat as we, we ran out of time. So I'll take this one and we'll end the webinar unless someone asked me uh, one more last question. Okay, so to answer your question, Eli, uh, um, uh, you, you, you can join our, our community and you get access to, to two premium groups. The first one is where, let me share my screen. 
give me a moment. Here we go. Okay, so the first, the first one is a group where you can ask questions and discuss trade setups with me and other traders. So here, like Rawad is asking about a trade, and um, here we go. And we share our news and we share our thoughts. And uh, on this uh, in this channel, you get also get access to it, which I believe these two groups are have uh, have more value than the tools by itself. You get access to this channel where I post my personal uh, weekly overview for you to, to learn while wh wh you are practicing. So every single week, when you make your weekly overview, you, you can you can check this channel to, to see uh, if you are if you are making your analysis as per our trading style, and you can compare your analysis with mine and ask questions about it. So, so when you join uh, our family, you will get access to these two groups, and there is no monthly fees. That, that, that there is no yearly fees. You, it's just a one-time payment. You will get access to our tools and and to our and to our customized strategies. So, for example, we have strategies just like the one you saw last swing standing. We we'll also have a rich bomb. We have trio retest. And, and we are currently working with our senior members on three or four more patterns called behind enemy lines for fire. So we'll get, you'll get access to, 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 uh, to our customized strategies that you can only use using a GTL indicator. Okay, so it's, it's not just an indicator, it's a trading style that will help you trade in an objective manner, as mentioned before in, in the last, slides on our PowerPoint presentation that your trading plan has to be objective or or you get emotional and uh, especially if if you you've got two stop loss in a row okay so you, you have to have everything objective that's why it's HTL to draw objective support and resistance just like the one you saw here all our support and resistance are are objective in a way that me or, or any one of our students can draw the exact same levels and the exact same same trend lines. So for example, we can't uh, draw this trend line as it only connects to two dots. So just like we've mentioned in our PowerPoint presentation, we draw trend lines by connecting at least three swings. While using HTL, we draw trend lines by connecting at least three dots. So what HTL really does is that it, 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 it points out the swings to connect. So in this way, you will not second guess your trend lines and you, you will not. Yes, yeah. Can you... Yes, yeah. Okay, so yeah, great, great. Just let me finish uh, answering this question. So uh, uh, you get access to, to our HTL indicator, you get access to our two groups, and, and of course, last but not least, you get, you get two manuals uh, explaining how to use HTL in a detailed way, and the second manual, it includes our risk ma management approach and our full detailed uh, trading plan that you, you can start implementing today. And of course, we would be by, by your side while, while you are practicing. Okay, uh, uh, to answer Sia's question, you asked me about how to identify uh, supply and demand using HTL. I guess you also have pre recorded members. On, yes, yes, exactly, Sia. Exactly, Sia. Uh, to answer your question about supply and demand, uh, ju just like we, we've discussed in our... Okay, we'll, we'll answer this question about trading view and then we'll go over uh, SIA about how to draw supply and demand. Uh, yes, Eli, exactly. RichTL, as you can see here, uh, RichTL works on trading view. It's attached on my chart. Uh, it's these blue, uh, blue, blue, and blue and red diamonds, and on, on MT4 you can see it uh, in blue or red dots. It works on MT4, on MT5, and trading view. And uh, and uh, for, for those who attended this session, uh, they can get HTL on trading view as a 
rich on telling view is an, an add-on by joining our community you get access to rich share on mt4 but you will not get it on telling view as it costs us uh, money yearly as we have to to be a premium a premium uh, trading view member to be able to 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 uh, to, to launch or, or, or to add a customized uh, indicator so we will pay like 700 dollars per month so uh, th that's why trading view is an add-on we just we just need to cover uh, to, to cover our expenses for this one we don't want to make profit uh, but you will get uh, uh, lifetime access to, to MT4. Uh, but uh, as a gift from me, for those who attended uh, this, this session, will of course get rich TL on MT4 if they joined uh, our community and will get uh, a trading view, a trading view uh, access for free. Okay, so you, you, uh, it's usually at fifty dollars per year, but you get it for free if you join our community. You will get access to. As mentioned before, HTL, two premium groups, HTL manuals, risk management, trading plan, cheat sheets, and uh, and trading view uh, 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 for free. And uh, uh, I'm, now I'm thinking about, about something special, and you'll also get uh, access to 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 uh, to two two or three uh, private sessions uh, w w w with me online uh, one-on-one -on -one sessions. Uh, where you can ask all your questions and give you and give you premium support. That's also for free for people who attended this uh, this webinar. If uh, if you join our community, would be uh, it would be an honor to support you in your trading journey. It's <laughs> it's, it's okay, Ellie. How much does Basically cost to get all of this? Yes, um, you, you, you can purchase RTL from our website. Let me let me give you a quick overview. Here's our website, research.com, and you can uh, you can purchase it via your credit or, or debit card, uh, or we also have uh, uh, payment methods like Bitcoin or, or, or PayPal also available. You can scroll down, and then you can get it for. Uh, here we go. You, you can get it for three hundred dollars, a fifty percent discount. You can pay via Master, Visa, or, 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 or Amex, American Express. But we, are currently, we currently have a promotion that uh, you can find it here. You can use the coupon August 2020. Uh, this uh, promotion is valid till end uh, of, of week, till, uh, till end of, uh, you, you still have like, 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 like 10 days, of, of, uh, valid till end of next week. Okay, so you, you can use the coupon August 2020 and you save 100. So you, you will get uh, you will get it all uh, strategies, indicator, booklet, complete trading plan and premium group access for, for 200 instead of 300. So you click on get started and you, you fill your credit card information and, uh, and you have got a coupon section where you can enter uh, the coupon code as mentioned before august 2020 to get uh, the discount okay i uh, hope i answered your question well uh, let's get back to sia i'm sorry sia for the for the delay you asked me if uh, how to draw uh, supply and demand using hdl um, you you just uh, you just um, let me zoom in a little bit here we go so when you see the market makes an aggressive movement upward, as mentioned before, uh, uh, that's the basic supply and demand. You can see we have a, in this case, we have a demand. And in this case, we have a, a supply zone. How to find objective uh, supply and demand during HTL is when, when price forms a dot and then takes time to form a new dot. So in this case, this this area here is is a, is a supply zone and here we have a new dot but price takes time okay like 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 100 candles before forming a new dot in this case that's uh, that's a, a supply zone as well and here as well and here as well in this case here we don't have supply and demand because price uh, after a couple of candles forms a new swing right swing 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 
So in this case, we look for patterns, we look for rejection patterns. But uh, in this case, we don't, we don't have a demand here because price uh, didn't take time before forming a new one. We have a, a demand zone here. We, we don't have one here. We have a demand zone here. So, so here we go. Here we have a demand zone and we can look for buy, buy opportunities as price approaches it. Okay, so long story short, if price form a dot and doesn't form a new dot for, for a long time, for at least 100 candles, we can consider it as a valid uh, supply or demand. It depends if it's a red dot or if it's a blue dot. Okay, and as mentioned before, as per our trading style, we don't sell on, on supply. For example, if you consider that you have a supply here, we don't sell if price tested, we look for sell opportunities. Okay, so as mentioned from H4, we are waiting for a momentum close below the last swing to sell because we have our first uh, confluence as uh, supply, our second confluence as resistance in green, and third confluence is our rejection from the red uh, trend line, uh, uh, a trend following setup. Okay, great. Let's. Uh, Uh, Rich, can I interrupt for a moment, please? Yes, sure. Uh, yeah, Willie, you just, yes, Willie. Yeah, you just mentioned on your last point that uh, here we don't sell, but we look for a sell opportunity. What you meant here? Uh, uh, Willie, I didn't hear you well. Can you please repeat your question? And, and uh, if you can tell me where you, you mean here? Yes, you said we don't. Yes, exactly. You said you said we don't sell, but we look for a sell opportunity. Right, 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 right. Yes, uh, uh, as as per our trading style, Willie, we always look for we identify our uh, key rejection levels from daily and weekly. For in this example, that's uh, uh, here's here are the only support and resistance from the from this time frame as it is objective one, two, and three. So starting from here, we can look for sell opportunities, okay? And here as well, let's zoom out. So here as well, one, two, and three. Starting from here, we can look for buy opportunities, okay? And as usual, one, two, three, we can look for buy opportunities here and here. And then anyway, we, we look for buy opportunities. We don't just buy on support and we don't just sell on, on resistance. For, for, for example, here we go, let's zoom in. Here we've got, as mentioned now, we've got a strong supply zone, right? So uh, if we draw it like a zone, we have to draw it from its base and its base would be the last green candle. The last green candle is this one, okay? Let's make it in orange. Okay, uh, 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 for example, in this case, it happens that we, we also have a supply zone around resistance. Okay, just like we mentioned before, we, we uh, support and resistance are not uh, supply and demand, but it happens that sometimes we have supply around resistance or demand around support. So that, uh, that's, a that's a practical life example. Here we go. So some traders consider this as a, as a supply zone and enter immediately sell after price retests uh, our zone, right? So that, that's not our staying style and we don't rely solely on supply and demand. We always look for sell opportunities around uh, uh, whether it's a supply or a resistance. So as price is approaching our resistance and supply, we are looking for sell opportunities. Well, what we mean by looking, we always zoom into our time frame. So identify our key levels from daily and weekly, and then we zoom into H4, H1, M30, and look for sell opportunities. As you can see here, for example, we, 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 we have a versions. I don't know if you, if you we didn't cover this section yet, we maybe we'll cover it later or maybe I will make a video about diversions as I didn't do one yet. We have a divergence which gives us an, uh, uh, an alert that a potential reversal might happen as price was making higher highs while MACD was making lower highs. And you also have another one here as well. As you can see, this one is going downward 
while this one is going upwards, right? So we have a divergence, that's our third, third confluence. Now our trigger, we also have an objective trend line. Let's delete this one, here we go. We have an objective trend line, one, two, three, four, and many, many touches. So after the third touch, this trend line is valid. And our trigger would be, as mentioned before, after a momentum can be closed below this area. That's as per our thing style for extra confirmation. Okay, so that's what we mean. We look for sell opportunities uh, on lower time frames, and that's that's what we are waiting for uh, now. We don't sell on, on uh, uh, blindly or immediately if price reaches here. We look for for sell opportunities as price can still go up and break it upward, or still go up, uh, uh, kick us down if you, if we entered earlier here and then go go down. We always want the sellers. To prove to us that they are strong enough to break below the last low. Okay, hope I answered the question really. Great. Yeah, and, and uh, on this page, just keep this one, please. And in case, uh, in this case, we need to wait till the price gets down a little bit, then came back to the line, and from that uh, from that point we sell. Am I correct? Uh, I, I still didn't, you mean if price went up, we sell around here? No, no, not up, not up. Just for example, on the first uh, row, yeah, from there. Yeah, if okay. The price, if the price will get a little bit uh, down, then we want, yeah, exactly. Then we want enter. We wait till the price gets a little bit higher. Okay, and oh, nice, 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 nice. Yes, yes, yes. I, 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 I get you now. Uh, I, I know many traders don't like to enter here. They wait for a retest and then we Correct. Sell, correct. Right? Yeah, that's correct. That's what I mean. Gateway. Uh, look, uh, as, uh, as, per, as per my trading style, as my, my, for my personal trading style, I believe that 50% of the time, price, price break it be lower and then continue down. So for only 50% of the time, price make a retest. So, so in this case, I don't want to, to, to lose 50% of, of, of my trades. So, so, so from my back test and so my trading plan, I, 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 as per my rules, I enter immediately after a momentum candle close below it. And my stop loss goes on the last uh, dot from the other side. Okay, and as usual, as mentioned before, two to one, two to one risk to reward ratio. Okay, so I don't wait for, for a retest. Uh, uh, well, uh, but, but what you've mentioned is really, uh, good uh, as I have I have like like two, two students that that they like to enter on the retest because in this case then they will get a better they will they will get a better risk to, to, to reward trade so in this case they will target like like 4.5 or or, or 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 five times the stop loss the stop loss always goes the same but the entry is, 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 is a little bit better, okay? okay. If so you so it, it depends on your trading style. If you would like to wait for a retest, uh, we, 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 we also, the retest has uh, uh, also have to be objective. So we enter on a 50% retest. So for example, you, 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 you have to measure the distance from here to here and measure it's 50%. And, and put your order on the 50% retest. Okay, we, we don't want to think, we don't want to, 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 to uh, uh, I, I believe you got the idea. We have all the rules have to be objective and rule-based. We don't have to think. If we think, we start to lose. Okay, so it depends on your style. If you would like to wait for a retest, then it's okay. But you have to keep in mind that you will miss trades like this. Okay. Okay. As as you don't prefer to enter at that point and you don't want to wait for retest, why on the last page you were saying if the price get up, we will wait till it goes down, then we will we will buy again uh, because that would be better in our benefit. I, I, get, I didn't get when did I say this here uh, on the daily time frame or where. Well, Exactly here. Let's let's uh, keep this one nice. on the last point on the current price. You mentioned if the price get a little bit higher, and uh, and then we want we will not buy. 
on that case, we will wait till the price. Nice, 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 nice. That's a very, very good question, Willie. Yes. Why? Because, because many traders, okay, just entered by now. They consider that they didn't have this area even. So what they did, they, they have their support as a, their resistance in this case, as uh, this one made rejection here and here. So they believe that this level 0 0.9, this exact level, as you can see, if we zoom in, you can see that this exact level is considered as resistance, right? Look, the very exact level price is re rejecting it. So, so what, what new traders are doing, they wait for a break above it and then they will buy, right? That's, uh, th that's the, not uh, the, the, the proper way to approach resistance. Uh, as mentioned before, the resistance are areas on our chart and not laser lines. So we have to treat it like this, okay? So we don't enter if price breaks it upward. Okay, why? Because as mentioned before, maybe in the third or fourth slide, uh, the banks put their orders in many, uh, in many, many orders, many sell limits because they can't just enter one one billion dollar sell here. Okay, so they can't just enter two 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 thousand lots here. They 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 divide it into hundred 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 or or five hundred. I don't know. Okay, so what, what really happens is, uh, uh, is they, they uh, uh, let, let me zoom in. Uh, what really happens is the banks uh, uh, trick, trick traders that this one is breaking above the resistance. Okay, why? Because the banks want to enter sell, right? The banks want to enter sell, but they want to enter sell but from where that they want someone to buy, right? Like they can't enter sell if, if, if their sell orders are not getting filled with a buy orders. So, so what they really do, they, they trick people that price is going upward to break it above the resistance so that people at new traders start buying. And when they start buying, they start to fill their sell limit orders. Okay, that's why you can see price goes up and then uh, uh, go down again. Unless, 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 as mentioned uh, in the section, the previous section, let me zoom, zoom out again. Unless we treat it as a zone, right? If price breaks it upward, we will not buy. That's what I said. We will not buy as we don't buy on resistance right but we know that our resistance as now is broken upward aggressively is now turned into support but we will not buy here we will not sell here now now price is sitting inside this floor but it is sitting in the middle of the floor so we will not buy we will not sell we will wait for price to retest it to to to, to reach our new floor which is here in this case to look for buy opportunity or we we'll wait for price to reach the ceiling to look for sell opportunities. Okay, so uh, uh, what I mean by, by, by retest here is not the case uh, uh, what, uh, like what I mean by retest here. Okay, so here's, here we can wait for it is for the entry itself, while here we, we don't buy on resistance, but we wait for a retest as now it's now to support and we look for buy opportunities, okay? Okay, okay, that's fine, that's brilliant. Thank you very much, Rich. You are more than welcome, Willie. You are more than welcome. Uh, let's check the, the chats. Okay, great session. Uh, after I join, I'll bring all novice traders with me in, in my country. You are more than welcome, see, I'm really happy that you've made it here. Hopefully, hopefully one day we'll, we'll, we'll visit you in your country and and will make live sessions uh, ali ali Ziz, best coach and trading style member in the community oh <laughs> hello ali hope you're having a great uh, day i'm really happy that you've made it here i, I didn't i didn't i didn't post it in the, the premium group but it seems that you are in the free channel as well i'm really happy to see you here uh, man. 
uh, uh, for those who don't know, Ali is one one of our premium members, and he's one of uh, of of <laughs> I don't know how to say it. Uh, one one of of, of the most hardworking uh, premium members. I uh, keep keep up the good work, Ali, and I'm here, and I'm always here for you anytime. Uh, <laughs> you, you are the king. I'm on your service. Uh, so Eli said, man, you're just unreal. This is a lot of value. Thank you, Rich. My, my honor, Eli. Hope to see you in our premium um, uh, family soon. What else do we have in the chat? Okay, Eli asked, I'm interested in your offer to get access to one-on-one -on -one session. I would like to discuss a few points with you, Rich. You are more than welcome, Eli. If you would like to have more, uh, more details, feel free to, to, to reach me uh, on Telegram uh, at, uh, at richtl support. Anyway, you can, can find my contact on the free channel. Uh, we, we have Bongo, you are the best man, thanks a lot. You are more than welcome. Uh, I'm really glad that you guys uh, like the information. Hopefully, hopefully I will make a video, uh, a, a video, uh, uh, more va value videos soon okay see so, so, yeah, i'm really happy to hear that um i hope we, we will give you more value uh, always filling uh, your needs with more value Yes, Ali. What? Uh, yes, yeah. As you mentioned, what goes goes around comes around. So, uh, hope you took benefit from it, and and I would be really happy if you if you practice uh, these strategies and this trading style for a while. And and feel free to ask me anything on the chat. I would be uh, really happy to help you all. Wishing you a very good night and hopefully to see you in our uh, premium community soon. Okay, okay see ya. You are more than welcome at any time. I really can't wait to have you in our family. Best of luck. Uh, I, I will close the session, this webinar in, in five minutes, in two minutes. Uh, wishing you a very good night. Uh, thank you for joining us today and hope to see you soon all again. Bye-bye.